Tuesday, January 3rd, 2023, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So today we're going to look at why 2023 and beyond, in my opinion, are going to be uh, times when you want to batten down the hatches. I think the economic chaos that is here already is going to lead to political chaos, especially in the UK, but also throughout the West. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Before I start, though, I like to say that uh, financially, economically, wealth-wise, I think uh, we, we've seen in 2022 how almost everyone has lost out, even the, the top uh, billionaires in the world. Uh, I think they they got a haircut of $1.4 or so. And uh, I think it's going to continue like that. I think the people that uh, are going to be the winners are the, the people that lose the least. And that's why I think it's important to have some insurance, wealth insurance. And, and I think, uh, and I've told you many times for the last few years, that gold and silver are very good insurance for these turbulent times. And with that, I'd like to thank my affiliates in the precious metal space. And uh, you should check them out if you're looking to buy gold or silver. In the UK, it's uh, Gold Investments. Oliver and Simon Temple run, run that firm. Their father started it in 1981. It's a family-run business, a uh, very reputable dealer. Uh, I have a promo code there, Maneco64. And in the last few months, I started... Uh, an affiliation with Andy Shackman at Miles Franklin. You can check out the details below in the description and also with ITM Trading and Lynette Zhang. So I started warning about the UK economy being the, on the brink of economic collapse and I have a playlist uh, to prove that <laughs> and you can check out my playlist and I started warning back in July of 2021, not 2022. So about 18 months ago. And how could I forecast this? Well, it's very easy uh, to do when you look at uh, the economy and you go underneath, underneath the surface and you realize that most economies in the West since the 08 crisis, they've been really going be in terms of GDP growth because of deficit spending. Deficit spending is just borrowing into the future and government uh, making the GDP look good because government expenditure is part of the GDP equation. And what uh, the UK and other countries have done, and the reason I focus on the UK because I'm, I'm in the UK and I know it's bad elsewhere as well, and it's not going to improve. The UK is uh, basically made government too big, even though they tell you we had austerity uh, after the conservatives came into power in 2010. No, but we, we've had growing national debt. We've had growing deficits, of course, because the national debt wouldn't grow without annual budget deficits. We made a huge mistake, not just us, of course. Uh, of doing what we did in 2020-21. We uh, stopped the economy for 240 days. We saw that there was one country that didn't do that and everything's fine with that country. And that country is Sweden. And uh, we've been on a diet of addiction, of debt and deficit addiction, uh, bailouts, and it's continuing. And 2020 was like a big show of that. Uh, we uh, saw the Bank of England cut rates to near zero. We saw massive QE, massive government deficit spending, paying people to stay at home and not do anything. And of course, that was going to result in massive uh, price rises. And I know the uh, crisis in the Ukraine, the war there, it has exacerbated things, but uh, something else would have exacerbated that. And yeah, the rate of inflation might fall a, a little bit uh, this year. But if you look at uh, 
the CPI index in the US and the UK, uh, is it really ever gonna come down as you can see by these charts? I don't think so. And even when it did come down in 2008 slightly <laughs> and for a very short time, we saw the uh, governments and central banks come to the rescue. So we are addicted to this uh, fictitious uh, economy where wealth is created out of thin air. And I think the uh, fact that the uh, NASDAQ had a really bad year and those uh, big billionaires lost over a, a trillion dollars is not surprising because they are they were big beneficiaries of this uh, fake economy. So there's some articles here and we're starting the year uh, on a bad note already. And when you have the FT saying that UK faces worst and longest recession in G7, um, <laughs> I think they are underestimating it. And that's why I think it's going to probably be the worst recession. It could be a, a depression since, uh, well, the Great Depression back in the 30s. And the, the reason for that is that uh, government has gotten so big <laughs> and is going to continue to get big because they're, they're trying to take more and more tax receipts because their debt has gone up. What that's going to do is going to crowd out the private sector. It's going to make things worse. And then they're going to have to step in again and it's going to be a mess. And uh, other headlines I've seen this morning, ha we haven't started off on, on, on good footing. Uh, you see this here, NHS unbearable as ho hospitals start warning patients to stay away from A&E. Well, we, we've had this problem with the NHS even before 2020. It, it's been happening every year for, for a decade in the winter. And also they're going on, they, they've had industrial action or strikes that hasn't helped. We got another one here, commuters hit with five days of rail strikes. Amid fears, millions may ditch trains for good. I'm not too sure uh, about that, though. Another uh, thing I wanted to show you, and I think we spoke about this uh, a few weeks ago. I showed you a, a chart. When you start seeing charts like this, a strike action calendar, a calendar for strikes. I, I think back in December, every day was filled with a strike right now. We haven't got every day in January filled with strikes, but as you can see here, we've got a rail strike, bus strike, Heathrow baggage handler strike, national highways strike, teachers, border force, nurses, ambulances, Royal Mail, driving examiners. I mean, and why are these people going on strike? Well, because our currency is collapsing and our currency can't keep up with workers' cost of living. Uh, yeah, they, it can't keep up. And, and their wages can't keep up with the destruction of the currency. And for those of you who said for many years that QE was not inflationary, I mean, wake up, wake up, because it's gonna get worse, as you saw from that chart of the CPI index. They're not never gonna let that chart go down because that would bring down the whole fiat currency system. So the flip side of that is that it's going to bring it down another way through inflation and possibly hyperinflation, as I've been saying. And before we look at the markets, I just wanted to uh, show you an article from the FT yesterday. Uh, again, the FT trying to keep people away from having physical gold and silver. Uh, this is what they say, commodities trading boom raises fear of big losses among retail investors. Experts warn of market volatility as trading volumes of gold, oil, silver, and copper have surged. I'm gonna put this uh, article, the link to it below in the description under archive.ph and you can read it. But what they're saying is that, uh, for example, uh, silver and gold futures on the CME or COMEX, the micro contracts, volume has increased uh, and uh, they're warning uh, investors uh, about commodities to stay out of it, even though commodities have uh, outperformed uh, 
all other assets in the last two years and even three years, as we saw during my live stream, I showed you these charts here, as you can see. But one thing I would say is that uh, when I talk about commodities and hard assets, that that's the place to be. I don't talk about trading uh, futures and speculating. I talk about holding physical gold and silver, of course, and also in the other commodity space, uh, aside from gold and silver, I talk about some finding uh, companies that will benefit from that and investing in those companies. And of course, investing is always uh, difficult and has its pitfalls. And that's for you to uh, do your due diligence and uh, your homework on, on which company to invest. I'm not giving investment advice, but the reason I'm showing you this FT article is that I think it's a reverse indicator. And I do agree with the FT though that trading these markets in a leveraged fashion is very dangerous, but so is trading uh, technology and, and the stock market in a leveraged fashion. And this reminded me of that article I've spoken about many times or editorial that the FT wrote back in 2004. I know a lot of you remember it. It's called Going Going Gold. <laughs> the pointlessness of holding bullion continues to sink in. And gold at the time was at 400 and it was about 223 pounds a troy ounce. So yeah, just wanted to show you that there. So is there anything else here to talk about? Well, I don't think it's just the UK that faces a, a bad recession. It's the whole of the world, especially in the West. And it's ironic because I keep hearing people uh, saying, especially in the mainstream, you read, oh, uh, Russia's finished, their economy is collapsing, Putin is going to be uh, overthrown. And here we are uh, since February last year, and he's still there. Their economy is not doing great, but it's, it's, it's going okay. So I think we need to look at ourselves in the mirror before criticizing other countries. Am I defending uh, Putin and Russia? No, I'm just talking about the fact that I think these are distractions. <laughs> and um, yes, so with that, let's look at where the markets are then this morning. Yesterday, of course, I didn't cover the markets because they were closed throughout the world. So uh, it's uh, 8.37 uh, a.m. London time. Uh, gold and silver have started the year well. Does it mean anything? <laughs> well, in the short term, no. In the long term, of course, that's where I think we need to be in terms of protecting ourselves and uh, our savings, of course. So right now, we've got spot gold at uh, 1837. So that's up about $13 since the close uh, on Friday. I think it was Friday. Yeah, we've been up to as high as 1850 uh, overnight and the low has been 1820. Silver is up about 35 cents. We're trading at 24.33. Uh, I think we closed just below 24. It's been as high as 24.56 and as low as 23.87. So precious metals doing well this morning. We've got the, the futures, the Dow futures up 0.8 of a percent, up 260 points. The NASDAQ 100 future up 0.8 the S&P future up 0.89. Uh, the FTSE is up 1.8% at 75.88. Don't forget the FTSE was trading at 7,000 uh, back in late 1999, early uh, 2000. So it hasn't been a great place to be. And, and I've heard people saying, oh, the FTSE outperformed <laughs> all the other uh, major stock market indices in the West. It was up like just under 1%. Don't forget though, the pound was down about 13% versus the dollar. So that's why the FTSE did well, I would say. To the currencies now. So 
the dollar is pretty strong this morning, despite the fact that gold is strong. So we've got sterling down three quarters of a percent at 119.50. We got the euro down seven eighths of a percent at 105.74. And we got the dollar down slightly versus the yen at 130.68. Uh, the dollar is down a quarter of a percent versus the U1 at 690.91. So yeah, a strong dollar versus uh, the euro and the pound, but weaker versus the other currency. So a bit, bit of a mixed bag. Let's see how the uh, ruble is doing. Uh, the dollar is up about 2% versus the ruble at 72.40. To the other currencies now. Aussie dollar is down 1% at 67.27. Uh, the dollar is up uh, slightly versus the Canadian dollar, 135.93. And the Kiwi dollar is down 1.1% at 62.45. Let's check out uh, platinum. Platinum uh, is trading at 1,080. Uh, so platinum is still pretty strong. Uh, the other commodities, we got WTI crude up a quarter of a percent at 80.76. Uh, Brent is up half a percent, 82.61. High grade copper is down slightly at 3.82. And natural gas, US nat gas is down 5%, uh, just above 4. So nat gas under pressure. Let's finish off with the bond market. We've got the 10-year yield down 3.4 basis points at 380. The two years down 1.9 basis points at 438. Look at the UK uh, gilt market. The two-year is down actually quite a bit here. It's down 11 basis points. Not sure what's going on there uh, at 359. I, I wouldn't put it past... Uh, the uh, Bank of England being intervening in the short end. And why would they intervene in the two year? Well, because that's where mortgage rates are set. So if they can keep that two year yield under control, it could keep mortgage rates low, uh, even though I'm not too convinced mortgage rates are going to uh, go down that much. The 10 year yield is up about two basis points at 369. And the 30 year is up about three as well, just below 4%. So with that, I wish you all a great rest of the day. Take care. Bye.